Okay, we call to order. Nice to see a big crowd. Um, we'll start with uh, Liz. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Liz. So, so I sent out the, the meeting minutes that I had. I have not been able to check them online because it's not on CTSB yet. So, Would you like a conditional approval? You could do conditional, and if it's good, I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Would someone like to make a motion that we accept these minutes? Can move to accept. Move to accept the minutes as as reported. No, no. A conditional. Why would we do that? Let's just put it up to the next meeting then. Okay. It's not such thing as a conditional. Right. We either okay. accept the minutes or we don't. We'll wait to the okay. Okay. next meeting. <laughs> All right. Conditional. Um, I think we're going to. Oh, Michael. Why don't we just quickly do this, and then we're um, we have to, we're going to lose Steve at five o'clock, so we want to have as much time with him as possible. Do you want to do your quick? A few minutes or less. Yeah, thirty seconds. Yes. Notice was sent to construct about playground. What we're offering in ten thousand dollar up to to spend to improve the playground structure. Decommission, take down the building, take it down, and it's not really done. Gave them thirty days to reply. That was about a week, that was over a week ago, and right now just waiting for a confirmation from them on what they want to do. And I'll mm -hmm. report it back to the trust. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Michael, for handling that. We appreciate it. Um, we're going to skip on <clears throat> the housing production plan until the next, um, uh, not the next meeting, uh, At the, but yeah. we're going to discuss, since we have the um, excellent extensive report from Fors uh, Foresight and Steve here. There's extra copies in the copier if anybody wants to look at it. Um, Teresa's been good now. Oh, okay. I made I made six extras. They're on the, they're on the. They just weren't done by the time it came in. Right, and uh, we have an enlarged version. Of, they're they're smaller versions of the plan, in in the paperwork, which you'll be able to see, uh, and we have a larger one here. And we're going to ask Steve if you would come up and perhaps just um, talk us through the highlights of your study. Mm -hmm. And it's a. Uh, this is Steve Mack, who is the, what, well, you're the president. Sure, yeah, of Foresight. <laughs> of Foresight, I think he's the, also known as the Chief Puba. Oh, uh, I don't know about that, it's too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, Steve's uh, firm prepared this report, and I think Crunch should just do uh, yeah, that, sir. So essentially we will, evaluated and if anybody wants to come up and look at the larger version of this you're more than welcome um a variety of different things excuse me well, would we we'll be able to comment yeah or ask absolutely. questions after the presentation yeah sure sure I'm sorry. not you sure. jackie but okay. anybody else <laughs> um so we looked at uh we were tasked with looking at the property to assess whether or not it was developable and if so in what possible way so we visited the site and we delineated the wetlands on the property. And um, this is an existing conditions overview. Property is approximately 34 acres. Um, and it has a variety of lines, which we've shaded on this plan. Uh, on this plan, the green is wetlands. So there's a significant amount of wetlands. Uh, the light gray represents uh, the Conservation Commission in town has a historically and currently very strict uh, 50 foot no build zone. Um, so that's the light gray. And then the darker gray is upland area that theoretically is suitable for construction. Um, so, and another... Just to get for the people, uh, your orientation, this is uh, Glendale Middle Road at this end, and that's the um, high tension line uh, closer to, to C. Right here, right. And I think, uh, Jackie, that's, yeah. your, that's your house. Yes, there. I see Marinsky's, and this is Koki, and this is Billy and Elaine, and other neighbors all along here, budding the uh, proposed donated property. Um, so we also had another firm do what's called a preliminary environmental review or 21E, which uh, the town thought was important for a variety of reasons, one being the location of the old landfill, um, and the town has copies of that report. Um, so then from the wetlands topography, we have uh, 
LIDAR topography on here, it's called, um, which is MassGIS provides topography. So we haven't field surveyed this yet. This is a general overview of the topography. We looked at the property and just came up with sort of a maximum theoretical build out. Um, if you were to put uh, development on the upland areas, what did we think you could get to? What it might sort of, you know, if you were to put every square inch of building on these areas, we did not propose any construction on this upland just because crossing these wetlands was a bridge too far, sorry. Um, and it would cost a, a tremendous amount of money to cross the wetlands. We do have two wetland crossings just shown on this hypothetical plan. So you would come into the property from Glendale Mill Road to an upland area, uh, and you could theoretically build uh, on that upland area outside of the 50 foot, this plan honors the 50 foot conservation no build zone through here. This is the zoning setback line here. Um, and these buildings represent, uh, not, they represent four plexes in terms of footprint size. So they're- How many square feet? It's a good question. I think it was about 4,000 square foot footprint roughly is what these are. Two, two stories? Yeah. Okay. Well, four units? Four so, units, right. Four okay. It's just a generic footprint that I took from other projects we've done. It doesn't mean you would do that. Um, so that's one development area on an upland. The other up, the next upland area is sort of central to the property, which is here. Um, and you would have a road that would come over to this area. Uh, and you could fit another unit here, possibly, or here. I didn't put that in this plan only because we need stormwater management and utilities, and there's a lot of other things we would need. And then theoretically, and again, I'm, I didn't do any uh, cost analysis on this, so I'm not saying this is uh, feasible from a financial point of view. This is purely like building on upland areas. Um, so you cross another wetland and get to another upland area here. Um, this, road, this is about 1,320 feet to here um, of, of length that you would need to get back to this area. Um, so that, I think this represents 76 total units, just out of a theory um, in terms of what's shown on this plan. Uh, would require significant amount of wetlands permitting, because um, if you picture the 50-foot conservation no-build zone, you also have a 100-foot buffer zone, which is regulated by the Conservation Commission. So how is it 200? 200 is uh, from a riverfront, right? There's no river in here, though. Oh, yeah. So I, I understood it was all wetlands. It is. So Riparian Act has to do with perennial streams, which are more, they run year round. Um, and these are what we would call BVWs, bordering vegetated wetlands and intermittent streams that connect to them. So the, it's a 100-foot buffer zone on this. So I got a quick question with that 100 foot buffer zone. It concerns me that the main road coming in travels right through that 100 foot buffer zone. So to me, that would kind of close the door on the project and really acknowledge the excessive amount of wetlands on that piece of property. Yeah, like I said, you would need conservation approval for almost any project you did on this project. You're allowed to do work in the 100 foot buffer zone. Would it be just this town's conservation or would it come from the state level also? So the wetlands, the wetlands Protection Act, which is regulated by the local conservation commission, it does go to the DEP for a review and they comment. Mm -hmm. The ultimate deciding authority is the conservation commission. Yeah. Um, so I understand your question. Yep. But what were you saying about Going through a wetland. Um, well, You're just speaking wetland, of the buffer zone here, correct? Right? Yeah. So well, it's not shown so much here, but the 100 foot buffer zone goes kind of like this because right. it outlines here the 50 foot, but then the 100 foot goes completely across the whole entrance of the um, project proposed. Theoretically. Do we need the 100? So this is the 100 foot buffer zone. So anywhere that's dark gray, uh, you see this, uh, this dash line mm -hmm. we've shown the 100 foot buffer zone. 
So you, like, like I said, you would need to submit what's called a notice of intent to the Conservation Commission and comply with the Wetlands Protection Act to do any work uh, within 100 feet of the wetlands. How is it possible? So, you, so you've got the road going through the 50 foot no build zones. Yeah, so historically that no 50 foot, foot no build zone is for structures. So no building permits, houses, you know, when we, we do a lot of the permitting work. Utilities? Yep, we put it, utilities we, are allowed. We put them in the 50 foot no build zone before, yes. This is obviously not building plan. This is an evaluation of what the land right. could possibly hold. So this is, you know, the, you know, obviously the the difference between seventy six, you said, right, and what we've been talking about is so vast that I, you know, I, I think that part of the conversation would need to be to the degree that we want to do something on this property. Where would the the best place that would cause the least disruption? I mean, obviously this is the closest to current home. But you know, this little wetland there might put homes a little bit further away to create some buffer. And the other thing I'll point out is that the really for the purpose of this meeting is tomorrow's the deadline. We got to either accept the property, which might just turn out to be open space if we don't raise the money or do whatever we're going to do, or we decline the proper property. That deadline is tomorrow. So the purpose of this meeting is to say, was it buildable? And if so, do we want to accept this gift or do we want to decline the gift? That's really what this is not about planning what might go in there, obviously. Right. You know. Right. Now, in your professional opinion, um, we've had a wet spring, but we've had wetter. Um, do those, you call them stagnant areas? I know that in the last eight to 10 years, I'm the middle house uh, right to the right. Next one over. Yeah. I've noticed that my yard has been considerably wet over the last eight to 10 years versus the first 10 to 11 years that I've owned the house to the point where I was just able to mow my lawn for the first time this year where other, you know, across the street, I've done it three or four times. So can those wetlands expand? I know they can control, well, I can go both ways. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm just concerned that, you know, we start something, even if we do like a three phase project and then phase two and three doesn't happen in the future. And then phase one is affected in the future somehow. We have a lot of experience with that right on 102. Um, so I just was looking to your professional opinion, um, you know, say we get three months of rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, if you, we delineated these wetlands um, mm -hmm. in accordance with Mass, Massachusetts law regulation. So we would have to submit that delineation to the Conservation Commission for their approval, and then it would be good for three years. Right, even if it changed in those three years, it's set. Yep. So you have time to design and develop. They don't typically change dramatically, mm -hmm. um, but there could be some variation here and there. Uh, there's no doubt, you know, like if this is a low area that just happened to be not saturated in the next five years, you may end up connecting that. I've had that happen right. before. But I saw in your report a lot of it is relatively close to the surface too, where you did some of your samples. Right, so a wetland to delineate, it's um, water, groundwater predominantly throughout the year within 12 inches of the surface, plus vegetation, and you combine those two, and that's how you come up with the line. So if some climatic event caused more soil to be uh, saturated, or for a longer period of time, yeah. You know? Right, exactly. Yeah. So the, it could, the, I'm dealing with that in Lennox right now, where, uh, in 2002, we delineated a big wetland, and now there's like a finger that's coming up in an area that was not delineated in mm -hmm. 2002 that we're delineating now. So, um, just to uh, ask Taylor and you, of course, for some clarification, um, wasn't um, wasn't Peter talking about the fact that something could begin or you could begin construction or begin roads or begin whatever, and then later, because of all the rain and because of uh, the climate change lately, the situation changes to make it no longer viable or at least not as viable as it was or to cause more trouble or not really be an appropriate place Let's face it, the climate has changed quite a bit. And I know Peter's lawn being next to ours, it is very spongy. Yeah. 
where it didn't used to be. So I'm saying, couldn't you go ahead and put in a lot of work and a lot of money and have it change in such a way that it would not be viable? Isn't that? Well, from an engineering point of view, I think you could handle it, right? In terms, like if let's say we got the wetlands approved, designed and start and broke ground in two years. And for some reason you had an incredibly wet situation you would have to add in under drains and you know drainage you might have to supplement some of the drainage one of the problems with the drainage my house two inches of rain i have a foot wide river running down towards the river towards the road over to a culvert and then it back feeds in one the town and I ain't saying who department or anything allowed them to log this back here. They preached to Vernier Brook. I've been after the town for over 10 years to go back there and look at it. That's where most of the water comes from. So now that this is a swamp back here, can you touch that? Can you break that dam out of there? Or is that something that's already established because it's been there since 98. Are you allowed to break that and bring it back to where it originally was? I, I don't know. I'd have to analyze it. Most of the land that you're calling wetlands right there now is caused by a dam that the town allowed a logger to put in that ruined and changed all of the land back there. Mm. The only buildable land is right out back of me, going towards the dump road. It's the flattest land. And these houses here, when they first approached with it in 98, they were coming up and doing a hook. And they were only putting 12 houses in. This is a ravine that takes the water off of the Power lines, funnels down, whatever. It's <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a Vernier Brook that runs east to west, and then there is Vernier Brooks and streams up on the power lines that run down. But if you're not there when they're running, you don't even know they're there. <clears throat> you could set up those houses and have another swamp like we do down on 102. Everything would have to be put up on stilt and the neighborhood ain't gonna stand for that. So, question. What he has uh, written, uh, proposed here, would that require a uh, zoning change? Or is it? No? How come I wouldn't? But, but this Why is not, not, we're also not talking about what we might do. It's well, really just looking well, at what is. Well, part of this has to be, you know, be whether it's, whether you're going to accept it or not. Well, let me, let's reword the question. So in an R1 zone, there's a minimum of an acre of land per single family structure you can't even have a multi-family structure in an i believe in an r1 zone so with those houses tucked so tight on that first cul-de-sac which is the one i think is the one we're talking about the most right now in my opinion based on the current wording it, it doesn't qualify so the way this permitting works because the state has different laws regarding this type of project is because we are at our 10% threshold, then it then every exemption that this does not follow for local zoning goes before the Zoning Board of Appeals that the select board appoints, Mark happens to be on it, and they they have to vote and approve every exemption that is requested. That is the permitting authority. Michael, I'm correct on that, right? Yeah. What bothers me as a regular citizen, if you have a lot that doesn't have enough frontage, that's a major no-no to a building lot. Right. And where is to Peter's point, Mr. Morris purchased a non complying lot. It doesn't have the frontage required uh, for even a single family home pursuant to zoning. And my concern is. Could I stop you right there? Sure. Or Jackie, where, where, 
I mean, the, the frontage here right. is enough for a single family home. No, no, it's, no, not. It's, not. no it's not. Not even half as much. It's 57 yeah, feet. You need 200. It's in your report, there's even if it's, yeah. it's enough for a subdevelopment road. road. You need 100. It's enough. Enough. It may be enough yeah. for a subdevelopment you, you could build it's a It's not enough road. for a house. You need 100. Yeah, it's right in the beginning of the report here. Right. Right. For right. that so, street, you need 175 feet. Right. To build a single family. That's not even how you make a you long district. You can run a road up, and, and that's plenty of yeah, you'd I have think to well, You'd have to apply for a definitive plan. Well, no, there are, there, and this is this is why we, you know, one of the benefits the town has because it's done a relatively good job building up to the 114 years we have. We have is that our board has some flexibility. If this were Great Barrington or Lenox or anyone, uh, any number of other towns that aren't at their 10 percent, they would have no choice. Yeah, the town has a choice. But you know that that's gonna that's gonna be a process that there's a lot of opportunities and review beyond what this board might think. But the laws are different. This town will follow the laws, but we can't compare. There's a, there's a reason why these laws are, are a little bit different because you know houses are averaging seven hundred fifty grand. And if we want someone family to come in and buy a house, yep. we're gonna have to figure it out. You know, there's trade offs here. And I'm just hoping that the board is open minded to the character of a residential neighborhood when yeah. they want to make that decision. Right. Having a non right. quote residential because yeah. because each one of these being you know four unit four houses you know. In each one, I think that's their most neighborhood. He's just saying that's yeah, what this is not a proposal. He's not proposing. Well, that's not what I was well, asked to do. So, so what he's proposing? So he's not proposing. No, he's not proposing anything. What, what, no, he's what, he, what he drawn up? What he's drawn in? He you really drawn can't even consider that. Rather what, than what you need to know is what you need to know is how many acres is this right here? How many acres is this right here? And how many acres is this right here? Okay, how many acres is it gonna to take to do the road? And then out of that, you know, what can you put in for single family houses in that acreage? Yeah, and then you can move forward. Without that information, how are you gonna move forward? This is only about whether we should accept the gift or not. The whole process of figuring this yes, out is, is future. Is future, yeah. But yeah. Once you what? Well, once you accept the gift for the purpose of putting the houses in, are you going to change this? God, yes. Yeah. This is <laughs> this is not this is not a feasibility study. I have I I understand that this is part of an engineering report. However, I think for purposes of your determination, you came up with a project that does not appear to be consistent, in my opinion, of what Mr. Morris suggested that he would like to see developed on this site, in addition to the housing master plan, which references the small town character of Stockbridge. So my question has to do with uh, a couple of things. One is that I think in the, plan, in the uh, determination, one site visit was conducted. Is that typical for this type of unique uh, circumstance, for one thing. And then the other thing, your report states that the capacity of the sewer force main has not been evaluated and that the capacity of the six inch water main has not been evaluated. You also stated that you did not take zoning and or subdivision regulations into consideration as part of this development. So my question is what criteria did you use to come up with this conceptual plan? And if that was something that you were led to believe was actually consistent with what has been represented. I, I, well, why don't I ask part of this? Steve's yeah. direction it, as the engineering firm was to give us a feasibility study. This is what they have produced. We haven't directed them to do anything other than to tell us what is the capacity of this problem of this property for development. I think that's where- Yeah, one way to look start. at it is, and I'm not putting words in anybody's mouth, but hypothetically, because we're talking a lot of hypotheticals here, you want to do 12 units, right? Well, clearly you've got 76 units on here, right? So you could do some combination of 12 units based on this report, right? I'm not saying anybody wants to build this. I'm not proposing you build this. I don't think financially it would be feasible. Um, this is purely showing 
maximum build out. Right. But how That's did you it. get to this as a maximum build out if you did by, not use zoning regulations? Well, because it's going to be of this, of applied by as a chapter 40, 40B friendly project. 40B. Right. So you're going to ask for waivers or variances or whatnot for all the pieces. So from an engineering point of view, you can make this work. So we took topography, wetlands, ledge. We didn't see much ledge, other site constraints, geometry into account to put something on paper. And I think you're, you're also very clear that the work in terms of the sewer and water would have to be done before. Yeah, that wasn't you know, part of our plan, scope. Any we just plan was researched what was developed. out there. We show it. I have a few solutions to that if, in fact, you exceeded the capacity of those lines. But it's not really part of this process. I, I do think there are solutions mm -hmm. uh, to overcome the capacity. And that includes... Um, Let's see here. I'm sorry. I wrote that down. A uh, centralized pump station or low pressure force main connection for the sewer and upgrade to the town's sewer force main in along G uh, Glendale Middle Road or possibly install a buffer storage tank. Is that what you're referencing? Yeah. Yeah. We've done that in the past on other projects where the municipal sewer doesn't have capacity. You put in a storage tank that releases the effluent slowly in off-peak hours when the main and Glendale Middle Road's not being used. So that is a way to buffer that. Alternatively, the town could upgrade their main. You know, there's all, there's alternatives. Very expensive, though. Yeah. but the, the... Now, my question for the board in general, you had um, Foresight do this feasibility study. I'm assuming it's an all or nothing. Everything you see on there you're either approving or it's a dead project because if we're not, I know where everybody's thinking. So I would, you know, I think we should focus just on that first. If, you know, everybody knows that that's the ideal in the front, but are you accepting the plan like he presents it or are we gonna- It's it not a plan. It's plan. not a plan. I don't want to requested this. Research. All right. I, Michael and I sat down when Hans wanted to give us this property. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to know two things. Is it buildable from a, from a wetlands point of view? Because there's not where dead in the water. And I wanted to know if there was any problem seepage. There's a dump next to it, all right? And we all know this is Berkshire County, and we have no idea going back 20 or 30 or 50 years. And I wanted to know before, both for you guys and for anything that we might put there, if we had a problem. But they didn't right. study that. Yeah, they did. They did 21 e they yeah. did a 20 20. Yeah. Okay, that was the purpose of this project. It had nothing to do with saying 78 units or 20 units or 10 units. It had to do with two things. Can it be supported from a wetlands point of view? And is it is it, you know, got poison on it? All right. A it can be supported. B, it doesn't have poison. That's as far as we are. We're not proposing 76 units. We're not, we're we're nowhere near figuring out what to do with it. Before I accepted this for we, before as part of this team, I was involved in accepting this property on the behalf of this board, which is basically part of this town. I wanted to know, do we have a problem up there? Mm -hmm. And the answer was no. Now, everything else is on the table. This is a appointed board. We have another appointed board that's going to review everything. We are nowhere near this all or nothing or the question of the zoning. You know, there, we have laws in this in this state and in this town. We'll follow those laws. But I also, I agree with you that I would never want to see 76 units up there. We haven't been talking about that. You guys have been to most of these meetings. We've been talking, some people have been saying five, others have been saying 10. We've been saying what I think is completely reasonable in the, in the face of especially what they're telling us this could support. You know, that is, this isn't a proposal. It is not a feasibility study. It is to determine whether or not the land was fouled and whether or not the wetlands could support something. Uh, that's Just, why we're here today. So, right. This but, is a feasibility study, Patrick. It, we asked the engineers to say, can this property be developed and what can be done? And the engineers have come back with this possibility. And this isn't something we're considering at all. It's their view as engineers about what could be done on the property. That isn't what any of us have talked about or think about, but it gives us quite a, a big avenue, shall we say, uh, to look at the property. And it, it's, uh, it was... <laughs> 
Yeah. Steve, it was shocking to see what you were able to put on the property. Yeah, but. I agree with you. I don't think you would want to build this. Right. We were asked to show areas that could be developed. And right? what could be put on there. Uh, whether that it's appropriate is a completely different question. It will be examined in great, great detail. Okay, so apparently you've got to make a decision soon whether today. you're going to accept the property. Or today. Today. Just don't Without worry. knowing if you're going to accept it as open land or you can build on it. That's right. No, we know that we can build on it. Well, subject to conservation commission. Right. So, you know, there's some caveats, right? Right. But, but if it comes down to the point that what you want to build, okay, and what the land can support is economically not really feasible, then it just becomes open land. That's right. Yeah. And becomes more land off the tax rolls in town. Sure. Why? We really need to take more land off our tax rolls? Well, I don't think there's The reason just why is that the town voted the town voted nine out of ten right to create a housing right trust to address the uh, lack of affordability in the town. I mean, that's not me. That's not this board. This board was created by a vote of town meeting. I, I know. And, and so, you know, the, to do that, we need to acquire land and we need to figure out if we're going to build something somewhere. This land I believe is in forestry. Yeah, I'd be happy it's if there was It's not much anyway. So, it's so they pay very, very little. Yeah. I know, they pay one tenth. Yeah. All right. So that works out to what? About the um, 30 grand, that's 300 bucks. Yeah, the right of first refusal to get sold. I'm just saying, you know, let's kind of, you know, we're not trying to be obnoxious. We're not proposing 78 units. I think if the art, you know, I, I think the question of zoning is a reasonable question. Uh, you know, you know, I care a lot about taxes if you ever pay attention to anything I say. Um, but 300 bucks on the taxes on a, what, 10, $15 million budget, or whatever it is, $12 million budget, it's not, that's not how we should make this decision. We should make this decision around. taxes would be on that piece of property? Uh, see chapter sixty one. It's a, it, no, it'd be more like three thousand dollars. Yeah, but not even that. Not about a thousand bucks. Four hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. That would be a good thing. It, it, we have asked a very, very accomplished firm to look at this property and tell us what could be done there, and this is what they came back with, and is uh, as Steve has said, and I think all of the board would agree. Um, it exceeds the uh, expectation that mm -hmm. any of us had. And I would also point out that from the taxes, you put eight houses here for home ownership. Let's say even, even you know, because they're deed restricted so that they can't flip them for the 800 grand they could probably get if they sold them. So let's say they're deed restricted at 400,000, all right? 400,000 out to eight is 3.2 million. That's 32,000 bucks on the tax rolls. Yeah. If you develop it all in self. If you put eight, oh, just eight. If yeah. You did eight homeowner units. Yeah. So if you put eight on there, what's the projected cost for the eight houses for the amount of road and the upgrade to the water system and sewer system? That's way down the that's way, 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 way. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. You shouldn't have all those that, answers. That is going to be one of the issues. Yeah. Besides, you know, I'm looking at this as next phase is the Conservation Commission is really going to have to take a serious look at this. Secondly, as you know, the water and the sewer are the issue. And that could really deem that whole process. And because that could be extremely costly, and because we know that there, if there's no fire protection through the water system right now yeah. on that. And we know that, that that road, Glendale Mill Road, has a three inch, you know, force yeah. main, low yeah. pressure, and it was designed for that street. Now, maybe there's other options that people can have or thinking about with the sewer system, but I... Um, or maybe it's septic with a well. Who knows if it's for three or four or five units, it could just be septic systems in a well. That's what these guys do for a living. Nothing uh, perfect back you, there. You, you're, you're not going to get enough land to perfect back there for that size. Now. I think that would be going back to the sewer, Patrick. That's what you could do. I don't think it's going to work there. Yeah. Sorry, I just have some more yeah, questions great, about your great, environmental great park determination, then. if I, if I may. So, um, Never logged again. I think um, okay. state, okay. federal government, I guess, identified the subject yeah. property. Give me one of the Can we have, 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 can we have quiet here? Please. What is, this is on page six. 
What is a freshwater emergent wetland? Yeah, it's a definite. I'm not the wetland scientist who did this uh, wetland delineation, so I'd have to get you the definition for that. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, and just uh, I guess another question is at least when I used to work in this kind of project, we had staff, with all due respect, review the work of the environmental consultant. This. Does the town have resources to do that, or is this just going to be accepted by you? That's sort of a. Well, this is, this is the so, consultant that okay. we hired. Can I just touch on that? When you go to the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. I, I'm yeah. not going to guarantee it, but I can say they will probably ask the delineation to be peer reviewed because they, for a project this size, they would typically do that. Michael, so, David Cameron, yeah, usually. Well, that would either be David Cameron right. or an outside second, but you wouldn't right. do that on a feasibility start. No. That would right, be right, when right. we go to develop the actual, mm -hmm. right. when the board decides actually what it wants to put back there, then it would develop actual plans yeah. and take it along, which may determine that it's not, you know, the feasibility is the 500 foot view, and then we'll right. target in as you guys develop exactly what you want to or consider doing that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to that sort of field reconnaissance. Uh, and this was work, I guess, done by O'Reilly Talbot and Oakland, who must be your That's subcontractor. The, yeah, the That's 51 the right. Um, there's a reference in here, page nine, damp ground conditions may have limited our ability to identify stained surfaces. We know that this is adjacent to uh, a capped uh, landfill, uh, but it says damp ground conditions may have limited our ability to identify stained vegetation, stained surfaces. Early spring conditions may have limited our abilities to readily identify vegetation potentially stressed from exposure to a reportable release of oil or hazardous material. So I wanted to understand why one site visit or was only conducted, but I also, uh, if you, in your opinion, do you think that was uh, enough considering the sensitivity associated with this development? And the other question I had was in the review, did you look at the environmental work associated with the cell phone tower, solar farm, uh, and is that consistent with your environmental review? So we didn't do the 21E, right? So if they did one site visit and in their professional opinion, that's what they needed to analyze this site, I've got to leave that up to them, right? They're the professionals in that regard. Our firm did over a week's worth of site visits out here for the wetlands and the topography and whatnot. Um, so we certainly have been on site. I spent four hours with their wetlands person. Yeah, and he spent many days. And he after spent that. many, many days. And, and so, Mark has also been. There is a potential alternate pool, and actually, there's two of them. Well, it's not on the natural heritage map. I, it may not be on the map, yeah. but they're in the woods. Right. Well, and it was delineated by the forester when he did the forest plan for the cutting plan as right. a possible vernal pool. So the clearance we do is use Natural Heritage's database when they have logged certified vernal pools that they right. have on the mapping, and there's none that have been logged. They have them certified, just well, potential. Into the <clears throat> no, would, they have the, potential. If you look at the- he's, um, They say no potential. Well, how much time have they spent on the woods? No, we'll back up a minute. The right. Natural Heritage has a database, and they log potential vernal pools. Uh, That's yes, what we look I know for. that. Yeah. I know they do. There are none of those logged. Because they've never been on the wood property. But no one's ever reported them. That's what he's right. saying. Uh, they can't be it reported. Was, it was report it was um it was um delineated in the cutting plan done by um Joe Zorzen when they did the logging back there. It was delineated on the map of a potential vernal pool. I'm just saying you can you can report those to the Conservation Commission, have them go out and look, and they can get them on the map. I mean, vernal pools are really important to protect. Mm -hmm. We can get them protected. It's just you know the CONCOM is the where where that's not us. That's CONCOM. I would just like to know how much the board plans on spending to find out that maybe it's not going to be feasible. Maybe it's not going to work out. 
how much money can you put into this? And then are you going to have money to actually build these houses? It is taxpayer money, whether it's CPC money or not, it's taxpayer money. The monies that we have are CPC monies. Which came from your taxpayers, yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And the I mean, how many more steps? This was costly. Your next step might be costly. When do you guys, do you have a limit? Did anybody set a limit on how much? We have, um, we've spent $10,000 so far with this study. Right. And uh, we will have to then, if, if we vote today to accept the land, then we will need to set a budget. But we have not. You haven't set has, one yet. No, because it hasn't been appropriate. We're trying to do step by step. And so we have a yeah. we have what we wanted um, in terms of information now. Both the 21E, which Patrick was most concerned about. I think you're satisfied that, yeah. that there is not an environmental hazard on the property. And we have we have delineated the extent of the wetlands, which is considerable. And of the land that's left after the wetlands have been delineated, um, the engineers say you can, if you want to try, you could put a, a large number of units there. That isn't what we started out or really. Would no, I understand to. that, but you're still, all the infrastructure is going to be an awful lot of money that's coming from, Correct. you know, what if you don't have it? Well, or before some of those decisions even get made about costing this thing out or figuring out how many buildings or where there'll be, one family, two family, all these things. We have the Conservation Commission, this question about access to the property. Mm -hmm. That may be a no-go right there. That could be the end of it. Who knows? Uh, we have the water and sewer issues to resolve. At, at, at what expense? I think in terms of spending the money, we'd sort of take this a step at a time. If we take a step and it still looks like this is feasible, then you take the next step. And and then even beyond that, uh, the cost of the, the roadway and the utilities that have to come in and whether there are developers who would be satisfied with something the size that we want. I don't think we want to build 76 units of housing. I don't think anybody's talked about that at all. Certainly not a bunch of four family things back there, right? at least as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Um, so, you know, we're in the process of feeling our way step at a time. And I know everybody in here wants to kill the thing. And I understand that. Um, and you'll look for any number of suggestions as to why this is an awful thing and, and uh, you know, environmentally degrading. But we're going to proceed a step at a time and see how this goes. I think we're going to vote to accept the, the property. And if we run into an obstacle that we can't overcome or that's too expensive, impractical, um, then we'll make a determination about whether this should just be open space. And you might have some people in there walking around and hiking. Um, it could be a point where the idea, whole idea gets, gets crushed. But this step that we've taken with this report indicates there are several upland areas that are suitable for building, that theoretically at least there's access to them through that entryway off of Glendale Middle. And so given what we've received today, it still seems like a feasible project and we're going to proceed to the next step, which is accepting the land. But as I say, any number of steps along the way could croak the whole thing. If we face that, we'll have to we'll have to face it. Uh, but I think in terms of today's purpose is really just to say, okay, we've got this report. It's conceivable to do some building back there, and we'll take it to the next step. Okay, can I just say that I'm really uh, surprised at your characterization that everyone wants to kill the project. I think that's all I've that, heard from everybody in here. I think what you've been hearing are a lot of questions that have been asked about the feasibility of, of development back there. But I have not heard one person say they want to kill this project. Well, let me ask, is anybody in this room in favor of this so project I'm if we can do it? I'm concerned about you your finish? characterization. And what I'm also concerned about is when you take this to the conservation committee, will you be representing this drawing no well so you will not be sharing this drawing with the conservation commission i think before you go to the conservation commission you actually need to have a project yeah 
no, and there's no project. Don't go yet. until there's a project. Like, let's so. say they select X number of homes and they would like to space them out somehow. Then you'd come up with an engineering plan that you would go to the conservation commission with. This isn't suitable to go to them. We could theoretically go to them to get the wetlands approved, but that's all that would be. It would be no approval to do any work. Did I misunderstand? Did Mr. Morris have to accept? No. We have till tomorrow, though, to accept it or else we, we don't have a deal. Now, he could give us an extension. No one's asked. Well, I, I thought approval his of the project. approval of the project before he. No, would, he, uh, he uh, that's what we were told originally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, he's going to he, it, we are going to collaborate with him. But this is not the project. This has nothing to do with. So he'll still have say, even though the town then owns the land. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I still like to know how you came up with what seems to be cluster development. It's not a proposal, Jackie. I know it's, it's just, not a proposal, not a but plan. this is still what is, it's not a plan. I get that. I'm, I'm just trying why to understand. Why would you think in that way? Is why what you saying would when think well, 78 units is, done. is the correct uh, description of what could be developed on the property when you're not clearly delineating what rules and regulations and zoning regulations, I'm, st I'm sorry, that you intend to apply for or waivers. I, most of the environmental reviews that I'm aware of have at least a project description. What's odd about this, and maybe there are others here who have much more experience than I do, but what's odd about this is that you're saying it's not a project. However, you're representing something here that shows what, what is your determination that that any housing up to 79 units is acceptable? Mm. Michael has his hand up. I, perhaps you have the answer. The only thing that course I was asked to do is what is maximum feasibility of this parcel under 40 B, which allows you to go to the smaller size. So what you're seeing here presented, this would be the maximum that this lot feasibly could conceive. Now, when you talk about the environmental reviews that you're familiar, that's when a project comes forward, not a feasibility study. I mean, even right now, we just got one done on one of our bridges. They lay out five or six options, but none are in depth enough for us to determine. They just give you the concept of, and now you have to choose one to explore. So now they've, they have an idea that this can build up to X units. Now, if they decide, as was stated, we'd like to put 10 units back there. Now you're gonna contract with a company that is now gonna come up with a, with a plan for 10 that would be designed in a way that can go to the conservation, would have peer review, would have all that. This is just feasibility. What is the maximum possible bill that this lot would sustain? So, so what is the maximum. Conservation Commission reviewing? If the next they step- They won't, if, not if this. So right. they have no role after this, after this determination. Right. Well, Because I thought you said conservation needed to review they, the wetlands. No, if, and, um, if you have a project, it's my opinion that almost any project you do on this lot will have to go to the Conservation Commission. So even if you do one house back here, I think you're going to be in the buffer zone to get a driveway back there. So they would be in Yeah. Right. But, yeah. but Jackie, uh, we're not it, we're not going anywhere except deciding based on we ask the engineers what the feasibility study They've come back with something that exceeds probably our expectations, but he feels from an engineering point of view that it's possible. And that's what we asked him to do, and that's what he did. And I, 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 have, I have two other points I'd like to make. One, so a couple of us on this board have to sit through these permitting hearings. I've been doing it for going on, this is my fifth year, all right, where people come in and they want to build in something that is postage stamp size and there's a shack on one corner and a house on another corner and therefore you can do 5,000 square feet. We deal as a town with these issues all the time because this is a wet town. This is not going to be anything surprising to us. We deal, we have to deal with the reality that it's wet and getting wetter. Look at what happened on Air Lake and Crossroad, Don, you know, where we had that house that, you know, what, what Betsy McKiernan's house where she had a septic and then it failed. We're going to be really cognizant of climate change and what's going on there. The other point I'll make is this, you know, um, this commission spent a year writing a housing production plan, which calls for, wait for it, five units a year for five years. 
the bare minimum that the state allows you to put in for if you want to do that. I've already been talking to the folks at Heaton Court about trying to get 10 more units on the top road up there because we don't have any place for elderly folks who want to downside to to retire here. And if you you can do mixed use, so some of them would have to be, you know, could be maybe market rentals versus, you know, subsidized rentals. All right, right there could be 10, 12 units out of that 25. My strong suggestion to the group is five a year is a pretty modest swing of the bat for this this group whose mission is affordable housing. And maybe like kind of, you know, give us a tiny bit of a break because nobody here is trying to ram 76 units down your throat. You know, I just feel like- Can I chime in as well, Patrick, on that? Just because- that just listening. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Kayla's a member of our, our trust. Yeah. Yeah, no. First, I just want to thank everyone because I know this this is emotional. It gets heated. It's understandable. And um, I think everyone's doing a good job of trying to see each other's side, which is hard. I also just wanted to say, in addition to what Patrick is saying, that, and I'm not sure exactly who pointed out the I, the situation about taxes, but, but everyone on this trust is also a taxpaying member of this community. We also pay taxes. So that money, if this is not usable and the you know the feasibility and finding out all of that like that's our money as well and i think we need to zoom out on a macro level and really think about why we started why this trust was established in the first place and what the future problems are going to be for the town if we don't have young families if we don't have enough people to be firefighters if we don't have enough school teachers like those are those are the macro reasons that this is happening so this can get very granular and emotional and i respect and we understand that but there's also larger reasons why why we're trying to find something we can work on. And I just wanted to remind us of all of that as we keep going in this conversation. Thank you, Michaela. Can I just say one thing? Um, what else? The, um, I'm just concerned that the town did not provide information on the sewer and uh, other infrastructure capacities, um, you know, associated with your review. Um, I thought, you know, throughout our conversations, we talked about, well, you know, we'll wait until we hear from sewer and, and water. And now in your report, you says, you, you know, you say it's just not available. That, that concern, concern, you know, that concern, it's in the report. It's, it's not available. That really, you know, that kind of concern. Is, yeah. come up. And you've come up with an alternative, you know, an expensive alternative, but, alternative. but, you know, I mean, it's it's just something Jackie, that just, concerns just, me. Oh, since I, we have Steve here, let's ask him. I don't think I said it wasn't. I think I said it was available. The capacity has not been analyzed. I'll double check your language. Yeah. We're nowhere near figuring out what, you know, how to do this or what we're going to do. The, this is, is. the purpose of this meeting is to determine, do we say yes, thank you for this donation, or we're going to pass? That's the purpose of this meeting. Everything else is down the road, and it's not, um, you know, uh, uh, do you need a, uh, before we get to five o'clock, I just wanted to ask two more things <clears throat> pertaining to just approving the project. During the hazard study, was anything looked at with the solar array panels being so close? I don't even know. I'm not an expert in that. If there's any negativity um, or off gassing or anything along those lines for people that would be in those houses and or the cell tower that is within a reasonable distance, probably I don't know, seven or 800 feet from there. Because um, I know Pittsfield has had a lot of media attention pertaining to the cell towers, but in your professional opinion. And then my last question, you said you're very used to doing projects like this. Is there usually a courtesy setback from a residential perspective or neighborhood in order to, um, you know, have a different style mm. um, construction site from a established construction site yes so from the solar and i read the report again i didn't write the report yep. and i don't recall seeing any um negative commentary about that okay i'll, I'll reread it again to make sure yeah but, i just i mean, throw it out there because i don't i'm not an expert in that yeah. and then in terms of setbacks i've done a bunch of 40b projects which are actually uncommon around here um, and I'll back up a second. You had asked, how did we come up with this? Well, mm -hmm. I used minimum separation of buildings 
sort of maximum building size, mm -hmm. topography, wetlands. Again, not proposing this. That's what I used as a criteria because a lot of times I'll get a developer come to me and say, we just want to know like how much could we build, right? So I do a lot of plans that sort of conceptualize, you know, fire access, mm -hmm. arcing, and you, you know, that type of stuff. So then to get to your question, usually the developer will come up with a plan that is more sensitive than mm -hmm. this one probably is and meet with the neighbors and get input. And then we have moved buildings. We have added, we have a couple projects where we just did tremendous amount of landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, so most of the projects I'm involved in are collaborative at that point when you're trying to figure it out or during, during the design yep. process. Um, just in this case, we have a little bit of handcuffing because of the wetlands to right, point right. around it. Yeah. Have you been to Sally and Gary's house, their new house? What's that? Have you been to Gary Miller and Sally Underwood Miller's new house where they built behind their old house? Uh, no. So, you know, it's like, it's like, it was a, it was a modular house. It was customized a little bit. It's beautiful. It's a little under 2000 square feet. It's got an unfinished basement. If the, if they, if it were eventually to be in a family's hands to like have more kids, it's really nice. Go visit. She's in, but she's told me I could tell people to go look at it. For me personally, speaking up for the board, just for me personally, you put four of those in a couple of those squares and you got an ability for like some folks with kids to come in and hone a home. And I don't think it's, I think that that's the kind of thing that this town frankly needs that nobody can afford anymore. You know, it's, but you know, these are, this is a doable project, I think that, uh, you know, and I hear, I hate the word project because projects thinks like I'm being of the Bronx, you know, I'm thinking it's a cul-de-sac with three or four houses on it, or five houses on it. It's not, you know, <laughs> you know, fifty foot swings. Yeah. So, have you looked at any uh, any uh, other lands around at all in the town of Stockbridge, or is this this just right now? This is the the land that affordable housing is looking at. The well, no one's ever going to give us any done properties. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we had to, we had a meeting with the owner of the Levon property, um, which is the old uh, yes. site that the Berkshire Theater had for its uh, summer workers, and that was a million dollar plus. Oh, okay. just the tear down. Eight plus. And 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 it's a pit. It's a disaster. It it needs to be bulldozed. Yeah. Well, it so, can't be because it's got asbestos and lead paint. So have you remediated then bulldozed? Which is what would have happened at Old Town Hall if we hadn't figured that one out. But just so, one comment on that quick answer. I think the infrastructure for putting in the road, the drainage, the underground utilities, and everything, you're going to be north of a million dollars. Yeah, clearly. Yep. Well, yeah. Where if, when you're in an established site like that, that's right off of a residential road, you've got, you know, I don't know what utilities are there. I know what you're talking about, but whatever. But it's not one hand feeds the other. Yeah. Right, right. Well, we don't wait here yet either. <laughs> I know. So it's I think we're going to lose a couple of people. I know Patrick yeah. has another, and Steve has another. Oh, yeah. um, Steve, thank you. So I, thank you for coming. Thank, thank you for your I know, I know. For to accept yeah. the donation. I'm sorry? How many members do you five. have to vote to accept the donation? So, five. Thanks. So uh, I'd, I'd like to, get to make a motion sure. that we yeah. accept yeah. the yeah. man donation. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for your attention and your interest. Uh, we have a motion on the table. Um, do we have a second? I have you. Sorry, uh, Jan just made a motion. The motion. I'm making a motion to accept the donation of the property. Trust. Do we have a second? Second. I'd like to now discuss before we vote. Okay. I just Please. feel like we've got a lot of feedback, and now let's just walk through what our next steps would need to be. And, you know, and, uh, you know, we've heard, I mean, do we have thoughts? What are, what are those thoughts? What does the group think? You know? Well, uh, I don't know what the order of this would be. I mean, we, I'm thinking of the things that we could, could be immovable obstacles to just stop us in our tracks. Water and sewer seems like a very important one. Even if there's a workaround, the expense could, per unit could be, you know, put it out of, put it out of reach. Um, it sounds like the Conservation Commission doesn't get involved until we have something specific to offer them. 
Uh, I'd be interested in knowing what builders or developers would look at this and say, uh, well, that looks interesting. I think we could do it. Or they might say six or eight houses around a little cul-de-sac doesn't interest us mm -hmm. and they want something bigger. You know, you hear about the Brushwood project over in Lenox. That's 45 units or something like that. 63, so, I think. 63. So, so uh, you know, I don't know what the economies of scale are. We have to, we have to learn about things from developers. Uh, and I don't know if we can informally get an opinion from the Conservation Commission with what we have now, just to say, well, what do you think? Uh, uh, without uh, yeah, it's called informal. You can do that. Informal it can be done. Uh, so we have some steps we can take to find out more information, get get more educated on what's possible and what isn't. And I think we just have to figure out what those steps are, what order we want to take them in, mm -hmm. um, and. You know, address these problems as as they come up. Uh, Don Don is here. I'm a water and sewer guy. I don't know what the process is for for determining that, and that depends. I mean, I had some conversations with some of the, the water and sewer department folks, and you know, it depends on how many how many units you're going to put in. I mean, could, do we have enough sewer capacity? Well, you're going to put in five houses or thirty. I mean, uh, you know, this stuff. And that you know, their line up there, it's like a three inch line sewer line on Glendale Middle. And it has to go up that hill uh, when you cross the river. Mm -hmm. And I think the only thing propelling that sewage up the river is everybody's pumps. Yeah, yeah. That's the power that's putting it up there. There's no big pump going, let's push that stuff up. It's like yeah. everybody's little thing in their lawn is like dink, 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 dink. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so you know, there's a there's a big question right there. I think the I think the the uh, fire suppression is an important issue. The last thing we want to do is put something in like this and then have somebody's house burned down because you turn on the hydrant and nothing happens. I mean, yeah, but we have in yeah. all fairness, we have that problem all over town. But yes, I got that. All right. Well, I know I know this has come up. Um, we have to we have to address that and we have to know that as we proceed, we're not impacting the safety of the neighborhood. We may want to come address questions of whether we can plant some trees to have a better buffer because it looks like this first quadrant. Uh, and the upper right of the parcel is fairly close to some of the property lines. Mm -hmm. And we may want to pay some respect to that. And, and, and uh, you know, people have had a nice woodsy backdrop to their homes for a long time. I understand it's a loss if that goes away. Um, I'd like to, I, I think one of the things that we should consider is um, there are a number, as I understand it, of, of programs available to remove man-made dams. And, and one of the things I found very interesting about today's conversation is if that is impacting your property, and it's not to make more buildable spaces, believe me, but you know, those man-made structures, we we have the right to take down. And one of the things we should consider is, is both to improve the land itself is whether we want to explore a little bit of, of spend around, because once we vote today, we own this thing. And that means it's no longer anybody else, no longer the swans for logging it. It's no longer Hans owns it, own it. This is going to be our property and, and figuring out whether or not there is uh, there is there is some kind of um, impediment to the normal stream function that could actually dry out. That could actually be a benefit to a lot of the folks in this room. And I think we should really strongly support and look at fixing that problem, regardless of what else comes out in the future, because that's something we could get on right now that I, I would I would be strongly in favor of us evaluating uh, to to help dry out the space. You know, because because from what I'm hearing, this used to be more forested and now it's a swamp. And that's largely because some some guy who was building the other you know, logging guy was, you know, uh, was uh, wanted to divert some water. You know, well, let's get rid of that diversion and really strongly consider doing that as part of of not you know not as a condition of the acquisition we can't do that but but as one of the next steps because that could really uh help it could help with mosquitoes it could help with all sorts of things that are impacted by wet you know and the other thing i think there's a lot of the state is very very interested in a number of improvements and some of the, there's some at this point in time substantial money for improvements and don i Assume that if we could raise the money, that we could benefit everybody who lived down here if we improve the water and sewer lines. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it'd be, a, it'd be a costly operation. Yeah. And for six or eight units, I'm not sure it's even realistic. I mean, let's face it, they, they want, like Brushwood, like you said, it's 63 units. So, so a max force grant of $2 million makes sense. I don't know. We're going to have to figure it out. It could be that this is, um, 
you know, we're going to figure it out. But at the very least, I think fixing the wetland issues, yeah, I think that's something that could be, yeah, yeah. There are probably a number of things that we could do that are, would have a great deal of impact yeah. on the on the neighborhood. Right. I mean, we can't divert a stream, but we can repair a stream. Well, diverting a stream is not what it's putting it back to its natural That's what I mean. force. Exactly. I heard you. Yeah, I was listening. And I, <laughs> well, what, what I don't think figure out is the logging company had to go to the town to access the dump road. So <laughs> it's not the logger's fault. It's the town. Who cares whose fault is at this point? 20 years later. That, but why couldn't I get anything done 10 years ago when I brought this yeah. to the select board? I wasn't on it. I wasn't on it. I cannot say. <laughs> you can get it done now. I hear a problem. I want to solve a problem. I'm hearing your problem. You outlined today, and and I think we should get on it because this is ridiculous. I completely agree with you. I'm tired and tired and tired of the do nothing stuff. I got to know Overseer, if you want to call wreck that, they told me that I could go down and cut the dam out. But because of the water that's down there, and you must have seen them, there's probably four more trees that came down in the last windstorm than you saw when you were walking through. through there. There, so there were a lot of trees the, down. The trees are uprooting themselves. Yeah, sure. There's nothing holding them down. That whole area mm -hmm. back there is wet, and it's slowly approaching mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. I've live well i've been married to my wife for 43 years she's been on that property since she was born i've never seen pete's lawn as wet as it was a couple of years ago because i watched him and his father trying to get the tractor out then i went over and tried to open them that tractor was sunk all four wheels never seen his lawn that wet Mine's always been that wet. That's why they have a culvert in the bottom of my lawn mm -hmm. by the road mm -hmm. that takes that water, diverts it to peats, and then it shoots it out towards the dump road. Right. But those were put in because it was always wet back then. Yeah. Well, I, I think the question water. whether it should have been logged is water, literally water into the bridge. But well, yeah, it's, they, it's a. No, I, I I feel like these are really interesting questions, and you know, you know, best case or worst case scenario, we're we're requiring some land. Let's make sure the land is as great as it can be, and you know, and you know whether or not we can pull off a project. We know we don't have the money yet. We don't have like a lot of parts have not figured out yet. You know, it's just the guy offered to give us a million dollar parcel that's in Chapter sixty one, so it's not costing the town. Parcel. This is this was he paid I think one point two million on. No, it. that's what he paid yeah. for. What is the town taxing that land? At? Well, it's chapter 61, so it gets like a 90. It would have been 12 grand. Usually, chapter 61 is like a 90% discount, so it's probably 1200 bucks, something like that. You know, I, I don't know exactly. You'd have so to ask the assessor. Basically, he's using it as a tax write off. Not really. The chapter 6, a lot of people in town are on chapter 61, you know, and that the purpose of the law is to protect farms and protect forests, and thank God we got it. And and it's not up to you and me to determine state law around tax policy. We don't get any of that flexibility. But let's not let's not demonize people who take advantage of of legal ways in Massachusetts to protect land. Because thank God we still have farms around here, and I think thank God we got these forests around here. Because you know in the in the in the watershed, for example, we got lots of land up there that is. Chapter 61 land. All the, the whole side of Money Mountain is privately on Chapter 61 land. I think so we're diverting a bit yeah. from our purpose. Jackie. Can I just suggest that uh, somehow lessons learned from Pine Woods uh, be looked at? There's been a lot of comments made about that development. It's on wetlands. Uh, the condition is different from Glendale Middle Road in that um, there are uh, single family homes uh, that uh, Mr. Morris's donation back onto uh, in terms of pine woods. I think the area surrounding it is uh, largely vacant and it's also adjacent though to, I guess, the transfer station. 
But I think that they're the only other development, to my knowledge, and at least from what I've read, that has been developed pursuant to the friendly 40B process. And every time I come to a meeting, they're always, you know, we always talk about that project um, as being problematical. And so I think that that there may be opportunities to apply some of the lessons learned from that development should any development go forward um, on this, on Mr. Morris's property. Uh, I also think that in terms of your deliberation, if you find that some subdivision regulations would need to be waived, I don't know if you will or not, because mm -hmm. you sort of, I know Randy's preference is single family home ownership, but, um, but if you look at the subdivision regulations, there's reference to an EIS would be required for a plan consistent of 10 or more lots. Um, I don't know what subdivision regulations of the town. Oh yeah, of Stockbridge. Right. This is a. Uh, yeah, and I think in that instance, probably planning board may be the ones. Who... The only per permanent authority that will review anything we come up with is going to be the zoning board of appeals because that's the law. We don't have. I mean, everybody gets no, to come to the meetings and contribute. Yeah. I understand that. I'm saying the current rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have a yeah. This were a private developer, there's not front they could never do anything. That's right. reviewing yeah. the, you know, projects. And so at some point, I guess we'll talk about the housing production plan, but but there are some significant uh, site considerations associated with subdivision development uh, that I think uh, at least you should be thinking about Particularly if you look at the report that was uh, approved today or you know, allowed you to accept the property. Um, but we haven't voted. We have a. We have voted. No, 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 we have a motion on the table. We're waiting. We're we are deliberating. We're actually in the Republican. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Well, we're That's all right. You're part of the deliberation. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. quite all right. Um, yeah. We have a motion. We have a motion on the table. I mean, Patty's got her hand up. Do you want to let Patty speak before we? Oh yeah, Patty. Do you have something to say? Patty, are you there? She's on mute. Maybe the hand went away. Oh yeah, there you go. I apologize uh, for the muting. Um, I don't know the exact procedure, but I am curious from the board why you're not going to ask for an extension. I know that today's the deadline and you've only have this one report ready. And I'm not saying it to kick the can down the road. I'm just saying that it's a complex series of decisions that will influence what you do with the land once you own it as to whether it's going to be converted to housing or not. So why not make that just why not make the how the decision as to whether or not to buy it with more information? I'm just curious, is there a reason why you're not asking for um, an extension? Uh, Patty, this is the information that we ask for. We have it, um, and uh, we feel that, uh, well, I'll speak for myself. I feel that the uh, in-depth work that they did is adequate for us to make this decision, but that's my okay. my opinion. Do we already vote and, to accept the land conditional on the 21E? This is basically, you know, no, validated. No, 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 we did not. We, no, we, not we accepted the donation agreement. Okay. Sub subject to subject to this, which was the 21E was part of it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Patty, I hope that answers your question. Thanks. So can we call for the vote? Is yeah. there a, call the question. Thank yes. you very much. The question has been called. I guess we should vote on calling the question. No, just let's go. Just take the vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the uh, We have a motion on the table to accept a donation of land from Mr. and Mrs. Morris. Mm -hmm. um, all those in favor? Michaela, you want to start? Uh, yep, I, Michaela. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Jan. Hi, Rani. Hi, Liz. Hi, Mark. Looks like it passes unanimously. Um, thank you all. Is you needed seven votes? Oh, it's five. No, it's five. five. It's five out of the seven. Oh, you don't have a nine. No, we have no, seven. No, no. no, we're only seven. Um, Okay, thank you all. Thank you all for coming.
Um, I think we'd like to go back and um, review the changes to the housing production plan. Karen, are you still with us? I'd like, I just, I would like to, yes. before we move on from this, I, I oh, would- Oh, wait a minute, we have you. Sorry. Yeah. Before, yes. before we move on from this, uh, I would like us to have on the next agenda item, uh, see if we can have a proposal for us to review, to take a look at the, the Brook issues that, that, that we've looked at today. Okay. I would like to know what it takes to just fix this ridiculous problem that you guys have had to live with for 20 well, years. Um, I, I mean, I think we'd want input. We might as well get some input from Steve. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I think we should know what it would, I think we should, we should know what it would cost to permit it because I know it has to go before CONCOM. And uh, I imagine that the actual removal of the dam might, or whatever it is. It would take you a week to cut through the wood to get to Yeah, so what? So you know what? So it's 10 grand of money, <laughs> you know? I don't know, I trapped around. That went away, do we know where the water would go? I mean, it, it, the water would follow its normal course, which yeah. would be parallel with Glendale Middle Road heading towards the dump where the dump road is. Yeah. There's already a culvert that takes the water. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to get the answer to this. To the wetlands over and back of. Do you want to uh, authorize um, Dr. Mm -hmm. a proposal from Slam? Yeah, we can do we it. Can ask for, we can ask for that. Dump. Yeah, let's ask for There's a brook that comes off of the tension lines and comes down okay. to a certain point. That other brook comes in and joins it. It's one big. Okay. So Why don't we. Uh, I think we do need a motion because it would be an okay. expenditure. I would like to request a proposal to identify how we remediate the uh, the problem uh, the problems with the old logging of this property and how it changed the the natural course of the of the intermittent stream. I think it's called. Well, it would be perfect if you could do one more. I can only uh, type so fast. All right. Well, I want a proposal to evaluate whether or not there's a there's a you know. Uh, how to remediate maybe maybe right. the problems with the water? The intermittent stream. Right. The, the intermittent stream. Thank you. I, I would I would second it. Um, obviously, we need to determine. We're not going to spend any money. We're going to just request yeah. a proposal. Who, who who can go in there and look at it and and, and decide on a course of action? Well, foresight. <clears throat> okay. Can do that. I mean, they've been trumping. They may already know enough. I think they. Uh, uh, the guy that did the what you met, Brian. Yeah. I think he could easily. Yeah, both of you walk right over the dam. Both of you, one one, you were coming down through. I was standing in my back here to, to come down through it, or you came down through that day. Is that where the dam is? You walked right over the top of it. Wow. Is, it right. is it close to the, the well and the boat? Oh, no, it's, that's if you look yeah. All right. from the road. Yeah, we don't need to, but, but there's a lot of, but by the way, there's a lot of state and federal money, state money especially, for dam removal. This was something that may not cost the town anything to fix. You know, this is there's a yeah. there's a lot of funding because because uh, well, these dam issues are in woods all over the place in the state, and uh, you know I I'm, I'm sorry I never I never heard of this problem until today. So and, call uh, it a dam now. It was logs that were put down. So I'm calling it a dam because the state wants to remove them, and if we can get the yeah. money to pay for it from them, I'm all for it. <laughs> motion, and I'm going to second it. Yeah. Hi, I Patrick. All right. Barry, any further discussion? Wait, is Raquel still on or she gone? She's gone too. Right, so we don't we can just do a voice vote. Aye. 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 <laughs> Passes. There's right. five of us left. Thank goodness. Nobody leave. Patrick, you have to stay. I, I, I guess. Go all right, Patrick, you also have a presentation. Would you like to I, it's not. It's just a, it's just I, there's some discussions around, yeah, you know, we're this thing called uh Justice 40 community. So that means basically, you know, um, but if you read the edge, you'll see somebody called us, us, you know, and uh, you know, referred to us as the anti snobby community. Do you see that article? The the the, the hilarious part of that, not hilarious, I don't think it's funny at all, actually, is um the the federal government has this thing called Justice 40, which says 40% of all discretionary money has to go to the poorest and least uh, the most underserved communities who are the most subject to pollution. And in Berkshire County, it's only four places. To qualify, a little part of Adams, part of North Adams, part of Pittsfield, and all of Stockbridge. Because guess what? People here who, who in the census population are, are, are some of the least wealthy folks, frankly, in the county. And so there's a certain irony because, you know, it's, it's, a, 
it's a it's not a question of whether that's good or bad. It's just a question of we are a justice supporting community. So, anyways, this uh, EPA community challenge grant they make special money available to folks who are in these communities, and it's all based on the map, the census tracts, the maps. And so, our, all of Stockbridge can get money to do some things, you know, uh, uh, to fix things that other towns can't get, other cities can't get. You got to be a justice supporter. You got to go all the way to Holyoke to get another one of these. Anyway, so the point is that um. Uh, we've been, Pinewood says there's a problem where the boilers are beyond their, 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 you know, their use by date, right? And they go out in the middle of winter and you got 32 units and they start failing all at the same time because they were all put in the same time and you got people getting cold. So fixing that is really important, but it's like at least a half a million bucks worth of stuff. Uh, and, uh, and it's like much more, just more of the same with fossil fuels and oil and the rest of it. So anyway, there may be some opportunities for grants to try to fix this that we qualify for that we otherwise otherwise might not qualify for. And the point is, I don't have anything to report yet because I haven't heard back from our partners. But we are working on we are working on trying to identify grants uh, that we might qualify for. There's one specifically that may be too big for what our needs are. It's a minimum of ten million dollars. Yeah, Patrick, what is the process for going through for applying for those grants? You. What do we? What you, do we need to do, or is it? Yeah, federal grants are harder than state grants, which are much harder than CPC, like local town grants. So what they typically would involve is hiring a grant writer, determining whether, you know, uh, whether we felt we could qualify for it and we had a good shot at it, and then spending a couple thousand bucks to have a grant writer come in and help us because, uh, you know, it's it's a matter of. Um, are we eligible as a trust to apply? Depends on the grant. There's hundreds and hundreds of these grants. So every part of the federal government has discretionary money. It's, I mean, it's it's trillions of dollars in money. It's like, you know, and billions of dollars in grants and well, whether or not. Certain of them, I understand, yeah. they're up to yeah. 20 million. Yeah, that's just that one. That's just this one EPA community change grant. There's a HUD, there's HUD grants. There's, there's you know, DOT grants. I mean, there's, there's grants all over the landscape that we might apply for. It's... You know, we, I think that actually having uh, a strong focus of this board of like searching for, you know, the federal grant opportunities related to housing and seeing if we can find ones or related to, you know, fossil fuel, you know, EPA, like health, climate grants, um, housing grants, solar grants, grants, utility grants. Yeah. Yes, so clearly. So in terms of this project, potential project on, off Glendale Middle. Yeah. I think there could be any money available to help with either the for the roads, stuff like that, possibly utilities. I mean, I'd yes. love to see all these places have solar, have heat pumps, have great insulation, great windows. Right, really be. But you know, Pinewoods is Pinewoods has got some specific challenges because that was pulled with, with something called tax credit financing. So they get people like buy tax credits, and they're good for fifteen years. And guess what? We built it 15 years ago, so it's just expired. Well, there's not renovation tax credits the way there are for people. Everybody wants to invest in the new buildings. Nobody wants to invest in the renovation of buildings. So we got 32 units of Pinewoods. And, you know, I, I don't want us to, our focus to just be on building five or 10 more units of new housing, because if we go and lose the 32 units we already have, we're worse off than we're already at. So fixing the stuff we already have, I think should be a very high priority of you know, everybody, you know, in the town, because they're going to rot if we don't if we don't figure out like how to pay for boilers or how to fix the siding or how to fix the roofs or, you know, you know, uh, or, you know, deal with the some of the, the underlying issues around the pylons. Yeah, you know, there's, a, there's a number of issues to your point. It was build a wetland, you know, yeah, and, and I don't know anything about the map and how much up off those hills are. I've never even been back there, but. You no, know, it's not a it's a valid point that we need to look at these things, you so, know, and uh, and learn from Pinewoods. So, Patrick, in terms of the next steps, are you suggesting that there be someone on in our group who works with you or? Yeah, sure. Let's um, to yeah, identify some of these and and then we can yeah. come forward with a couple of suggestions yeah. and hire a grant writer to yeah. do those. Yeah. I think so. That it's very I, valid to to uh, seek out a grant. Uh, I th I would like to see a motion yeah. that, that we so that we start the process of finding a grant writer. Period. We accepted a piece of land. Yeah. 
that is going to need a lot of money. Would this be somebody who would need real expertise? I mean, it's Justice 40 thing sounds yeah. very complicated, you know, federal. Oh, so it's like any other federal grant. It's just a federal grant. It's just this. In itself sounds very complicated. But yeah, well, well, it depends which agency. You know, yeah, I mean, we're going to have to up our game. Yeah. But, 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 uh, grant writers, so, just like we found the lady that's getting us the money for the, um, I don't even remember the name of it. I think the grant research comes before the writing. We we need to understand a better sense of the lay of the land. I I only have so, so much I'll, time in the day. I'll volunteer so, to help do. All right, let's bit. work. Let's work on that together. Right. And uh, and uh, you know, and I feel like um, that you know um, Biden will lose. Some people in the room maybe think that's a good idea. Uh, but these are grants that were created in 2020 that may go away. In a year, right. and we should really be get ready. You know, ready. strike while the I think money's the only out there. way to be really effective is to get to hire a grant writer who knows that the whole game. And once you once you get someone who understands yeah. the particular, the way you get these grants, just as mm -hmm. yeah, in the process. Well, maybe a step before the writer, which mm -hmm. is the the, so the person who understands the landscape in this area who can right well that's the research we need right. to do right, right now is find the right. person who understands the game yeah okay um and if you two can can do that that's fantastic right. thank okay. you all right um you we have, we have some changes to the uh housing production plan based on our meetings yes i think that i i, I would want to comment this because then i have to go um i think that the substantive change requests are absolutely worth discussing um, I think that the question on formatting and links and whatever, I, I feel like, you know, Karen's not time is not free. Do we lose Karen or I think we lost Karen? Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I've oh, been here. Sure. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. We can't no. see you for some reason, Karen. <laughs> our, board, our board is missing everything except us. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, good. Um, I can see you. Oh, oh terrific. Uh, we can't see you, but that's uh, that's all right, as long as you can see us. Jackie, okay. did you want to say something else? Yes, I just wanted to say I appreciate your willingness. I wrote a few notes. I appreciate your willingness to add language to the plan that emphasizes the importance of community housing that is harmonious with Stockbridge's small-town character with opportunities for community input on plans. It would be helpful to understand how that will be implemented by the trust because I think you said you might want to take the lead in that regard. I don't think it fleshes out how you will do that or to ensure community input in the development of RFPs. That's one comment. And let me just go on and then maybe mm -hmm. talk a little bit more. And also, because Patrick is here, and I know you have to go, but there's a quote that you're including in the uh, housing production plan that says at the select board meeting that building affordable housing on two or four acres, four acre lots under current zoning does not work. I was present at that meeting. I don't recall the context. That was that. Cardillo. That's what feels we should have. Uh, we should reduce the, the minimum lot size. You know, look, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that the town could do to make lot okay. yeah. reduce the minimum lot size. I mean, because it just from my viewpoint, the way the language appears as a sort of highlighted reference. Yeah, I don't I'm not, I don't think we should message is it sounds as though what you're yeah. saying is that affordable housing is more appropriate in the R1, which is what we're just talking about on Glendale Little Road, yeah. or within the RC and the business district. I don't think that was his intent. I don't think that's the town's right. intent. Personally, I, don't I think, think that's your intent, but I think that language could lead one to that conclusion. Do you think that should come out? Because I feel like it should maybe come up because it's not, this is zoning decisions is, is the planning board, the select board. It has nothing to do with the housing trust, I believe is not, is not, that's not our mission is to figure out the town zoning. I mean, there's other things you could do. You could request, you could, you want to build more house in town, you know, you, you know, have smaller lot sizes, have, have, you know, uh frontage requirements are really reduced but there's a trade-off there which is it looks like stockbridge for a reason because these rules are in place so this is not a discussion we're going to figure out in this board that's for the elected boards right. i think but to you start have, you have two other people on your select board yeah. so i think it would be more appropriate for you to yeah. go back to see if the select board would like that language included in the plan it seems to have come I'm happy to take it out. I just thought that it was interesting that he made that comment. I think he was basically saying that you need some amount of density to make affordable housing work. 
And you can't deal with a single house on a four acre lot and make it affordable unless you're going to put in hundreds of thousand dollars in subsidies. So if this is going to be an issue that's going to put people off, uh, I'm, I'm happy to take it out. I just thought it was a right on comment. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. What it yeah. led me to think was if someone donates property in an R4 district, for example, is that something that the town would look at from the viewpoint of a friendly 40B proposal? Why not? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, and yeah. with that language as proposed, it would not lead me to that conclusion. Yeah. So, okay. you know, that's. Uh, we'll, take we'll, we'll take I, it out. We'll take it out. I, um, and, and I really do appreciate your careful listening. It really has been helpful. I mean, we've only been at this for a year. <laughs> a lot, most of us have yeah. had no, yeah, we're, we're learning as we go. It's not like this is some, you know, it's kind right. of, um, un, it's, it's amazing how um, hard. It's, I think the other it's, side of it, Jackie, is that we appreciate the fact there's somebody in our town who cares enough to read all of this yeah. very difficult <laughs> material and make these intelligent decisions. So thank and, you. And to read it multiple times. <laughs> yeah. uh, but also, obviously, this process has engendered a lot of community participation. Mm -hmm. And I think that can only be something that's very positive, you know. Um, yeah. Yes, so absolutely. I went to the planning board meet uh, briefing uh, as well. And I think that there were some really good ideas that came out of that. Uh, such as there are other stakeholders. Uh, I think Red Lion in mm -hmm. there was a reference. Mm -hmm. They have some a two acre parcel. There was a reference to um, I forgot another parcel. Maybe it was uh, Marion Brothers or somebody. Uh -huh. There's a, yes. a lot of land, but yeah. I think I think the plan only gets stronger as you involve more stakeholders. Right. You know, in this process. Um, uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to Trees. Uh, I forgot to ask Mr. Uh, I forgot to Mac. Yeah, like there was a um, sensitivity to our environment is really important. And just based on that, I don't even know what to call it because you're saying it's not a plan, it's not a project, but like this representation of the maximum build out. The feasibility that's study, the, that's the what this did. Study. You know, mm -hmm. there wasn't anything associated with taking down trees, the number of trees, the caliber of the trees. You're creating potentially a very uh, impervious environment that can affect yeah. uh, ecology. When I saw that, I saw I sat down with with uh, with Stephen Mike. What was that about a week ago when he first brought that in, and I was like. Oh man, what are you proud? Seventy six units of because I knew how that would like come across the like. I'm sure you weren't surprised. I was. I was like, well, and then I understood that it was just a man. It was the engineer saying this is what the land could conceivably, you know? But you know, we end up with. I mean, obviously, what's possible and what we're going to do are are two hugely different things. Can you guys? Do you mind if I go? I have another meeting started half an hour that I got to run to. Okay. Right. Thank, you, Patrick. Thank, you, Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Community has a has a role. You know, sometimes that's tied into for the application's file when a conversation is uh, has gone with the town. Um, well, we tried to put we we tried to put in okay. just the housing production plan that there would be interaction with the community. We don't have a plan yet, so I think it, it would be the intent of all of us to make sure when we are developing the plan that we are engaging with the community all the way along. So we're not doing anything in kind of, you know, behind closed doors. We, we can't meet as a group unless it's an open public meeting, which would be announced on the website. Right. Um, so it's not like we're gonna formulate a plan and then spring it on people. We're gonna probably hash it out around this table uh, right. with input and with you and others. <laughs> right. I mean, I hope we've well. demonstrated that we are very open to have you attend our meetings and to participate by virtue of the fact that you have revised the plan you posted it mm -hmm. so that we could all see it i think shows the uh the spirit of you know what we're all trying to accomplish here 
Yeah. Well, I, I, I will just well. also mention that uh, just this morning, I received a note from Kate Fletcher from the planning board, and she has a few additional suggestions for uh, possible changes. So we'll, we'll need to do another round, I think, of uh, we'll have some discussion about a couple of those changes and then um, have another draft. So you'll get an opportunity to see it again. <laughs> That's wonderful. I mean, yeah. probably at our next meeting or the one after that. Um, mm -hmm. Since you guys have experience with this, how do you, I know you can't completely answer, but what do you foresee as a timeline for all of this, even very broadly? You mm. experience I know anyone here. You can't really answer, but it's always longer than I can answer that with it's always longer than you hope or you think or you try to change. So I, I do understand, even on small skin, but any thought? Um, I'll try to answer that for you. I think that it, it, in terms of the outline of what needs to be done, is that um, we need to formulate a list of questions that we want to resolve and what help we're going to need to resolve those. And they involve, I, I think, uh, employing a very skilled uh, land planner to take this information and help us formulate. We need to fo uh, speak among ourselves, and this is a decision that we will make as to what kind of project we might like to do, whether it be rental um, or for sale housing. I think those those questions, I particularly have a bias, but I'm only one vote here. Um, but uh, I think that that um, we need to sort of start at the top. What are we trying to do? How can we go about it? What help do we need? And depending on the questions and how complicated they are, and they're pretty complicated here because of all the environmental questions, um, I could envision taking probably a year to get to a point where we think we have a project that we'd like to take to the, to the various town boards. So it's, it's not something that'll happen tomorrow. No, I know that, but I- Or even next month or six months, I think certainly a planning, planning timeframe of, of a year is not, not too long at all. No, it doesn't seem long. <laughs> and then it takes longer because trying to get somebody to build anything these days. <laughs> it takes, well, we, we definitely- and, start, and the cost of lumber is going up. Yeah. We, we are not a development company no. around we're this table. Volunteers. We are volunteers. <laughs> we don't forget we're volunteers and it's not a full-time job. That's right. Um, and we yeah. don't get paid. And we um, definitely don't get paid. Right. But to your point, we are a community and this this community means everything to me. That's why I'm on this board, why I'm on the planning board. I don't want anything to be overdone. I don't want it to be the, the town that it, it, I don't want it to be, I don't want to take this away. You know, I want to make this available to a few more people that would be my kid's age or when I was here to enjoy the way I did. They can't do it. Now. They just can't. And this is, it's true all over the country. We are in this weird economic, weird thought process of who makes money and where it goes. And I can go into all of that, but we'll take that out. Um, we have to, and Starford has always been one of those places that does things first. So we're trying, we're just trying to make it possible for a future for the town too, because we're gonna age out and there's gonna be nobody here except second homeowners. And that doesn't, that doesn't take but, care of us. The interesting thing about the Morris uh, property, though, is that the street itself is so reflective of what you're trying to True. maintain. Mm -hmm. True, and I don't think Single we're trying to... Family, homeowners, right. families living across the street from each other. I don't think we're trying... We're definitely People not lived here what we saw today. When I saw that, I went... What? <laughs> you know, I was really like, oh, my goodness. That's not what we're shooting for. We are shooting for a couple. Or we're shooting for you know, whatever. If it, if we can do it, if we can do it monetarily, if there's a good chance we can't. So we'll see. That first circle that he has the nine houses. 
the 98 proposal had three in yeah, that spot. I know. I think he was just looking at feasibility and he Plus, was going for his big. I didn't see any setbacks. Right. Or the property lines. The 98 had a uh, hundred foot mm -hmm. setback. Some of those are yeah. right on my back <laughs> my property line. The, the setbacks are on the plan though. Right. Yeah. Right. But uh, like I said, the the original ones had off of the back property lines, all these back property lines, there's a hundred foot setback. That these they are the required ones. That they it may have changed. Required by who? By the, no. the, the, the well, if you go by the zoning in a one in a one acre zoning area, there's all kinds of setbacks and things. We're what we're talking would about would not conform yeah. to the to the to the zoning. Yeah. But, but he's got the 40 foot setbacks. That's the, the that's the town setback. So yeah. He's got town. He's got the town. It, it, may have changed, it may have changed between. This is where I'm more concerned about is when the road comes up through that it's way close to my property line, mm -hmm. and this is exactly where the water comes down through, right up where you're mm -hmm. proposing to put that road, and you're going to have to dig down, lay all sorts of. Gravel. gravel and stuff just to divert that water that normally comes out of there. I don't think anybody took that into consideration, the amount of rainfall and the water that it produces coming out of there because, and I kind of laughed when he said there's no ledge. There's ledge. My house, Pete house, there's ledge right in here. That's above ground, and it's as big as that rock that he got out there. I don't know where he didn't come up with that. And the brook that they dammed up cuts right through here. So that's cutting into this. Well, this is helpful to know. I mean, this a lot is really of, helpful to know. A lot of water comes off of here. There's a 14 foot ravine that comes right down through here and meets up with the brook that crosses over. There is no delineation in the land levels mm -hmm. on this map. This map is flat. It doesn't show that from the road to here is flat from the brook heading up to the power lines, it goes up probably a hundred feet in height. That information's on another plan, yeah, actually. Yeah, I thought it's on there. Well, this is actually showing the different... I think it's over there. This one. Yeah, we passed by. Yes. We're trying yeah. to get through the housing production. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> to be continued. Okay. Jackie, what else? Do you want? And Karen, are Karen, you're there. I'm still here. Good. All right. Hi, Karen, thank and you, you. And you. Uh, oh, I just got one more question. Jackie, do you have? Uh, do you have Karen's? Can you give Jackie Karen's? It'd be helpful to Karen. Karen's the one that's going to make the changes. We, yeah. can't see her, we can't but... see her. We're not sure what happened to her. <laughs> well, I, I would rather. I think it would be better to pass with things you? through Jan. Yeah, I think okay. so. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. If you pass it to Jan and Jan and, J and Karen. Forgive me, of course. Okay. Is that it? All right. So mm -hmm. I on, on this front, uh, we will have one more round of these changes probably in the next few weeks. And then kind of a final set, and then we, I'd like to, uh, at that point, suggest we close, have, it. we close it, and we would need to go back to the planning board and go back to the select board for yeah. approval. Right now, I don't think we have, uh, we don't have any dates to go back to We yet. don't. Okay, we don't. But so you're, you're right in May? May 20th. May 20th, and the election is 21st. Yep. All right. Um, do you okay. need, you don't need any votes or anything? Okay. So Karen, thank you for staying through this. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Sure, we'd be in touch.
Okay. All right. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Very much. Okay. Uh, next meeting. Uh, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. How much? What job do you want? Two weeks. What is that? That is the thirteenth. I have jury duty. Okay. <laughs> so now we can't do that. <laughs> no, I can not tell you the second. <laughs> I'm going to do it that Thursday. What is What's whatever that is? Thursday the 16th. I'm going to be gone. Okay. Okay. I think. Why am I going to be gone? I guess I'm going to be gone. Okay. Yep, I have to. I'm, I'm busy. Okay. All right. That's the date. Well, I don't, you don't want to go three weeks out. No. Oh, wait a minute. What are we looking at here? Yeah, that's, that's after. Month? No, and then you're after the meeting. Then you're after town meeting. You have to do it before town meeting, no? Um, well, we don't really have anything that involves them. Well, I, I think we need to start in on... What time did jury duty end? <laughs> I haven't served on one in like 40 years. Well, you might not get chosen. I plan not to get Okay. So what... Pick a date there. Well, if you can do we Monday need... the 13th, then make it like but, 5 o'clock. So I well, that's get... the day after Mother's Day. Oh, oh that's the day after I'm, Mother's I'm, Day. I'm iffy in any event because okay. grandchild number two or <laughs> unknown. <laughs> Still unknown. Still unknown. Still unknown. Still unknown. Uh, what about you? Are you uh, going anywhere? Or? No, I don't have any travel plans for a while. How about we just put this out in an email and try and figure it out? Because okay. we only have four of us here. All right. All right. So what like what possible may that what possible dates? Well against the calendar. No, um we don't have any thoughts. We really don't because well, we could do it after my jury duty, which is the day after my meeting. No, no that day. that's not good for I mean it, it might be. Yeah, it might be. any any dates that'd be iffy in the next couple of weeks for me. Yeah, I know I'm kinda of there too. So let's just go ahead and I finally have her leave for a couple of weeks of my <laughs> now you're free and no one else is. That's right. Um can we tentatively say Monday the sixth? That's up to Mother's Day. Or, that's the one or do we want to this, oh that's next week. Forget that's that. next week. So let's let's just do it that the third day after Mother's Day. The thirteenth, if 13th. you want to do that. We can always do it by video. Yeah. Is that your jury day? Yep. Well, well I, the, let, yeah. All right. What's let, what's let, the next? Uh, the twentieth. Well, that's the town meeting, right? Is it on a Monday? Yes, it's always on. It's yeah. always on a Monday. Yep. Okay. What what about the let's, let's what about the Friday, Friday before? Fridays ago. All right. Just trying. I know. Let's just shoot for Monday the thirteenth. Okay. And if people, all right, what can we have any other alternative? At all, I can do go back to the dates. <laughs> a calendar. Somebody look at a calendar. Uh, uh, 13th, that is Friday the 13th. There's well, see, they're probably using this room too. There are other things to think about, right? Um, but the most important thing is having everybody here. Yes, yeah, so the, the Thursday just doesn't work for me on babysitting. Okay, um. The following Monday, the 20th is town meeting, so that's not possible. Okay. And the 21st is an election day. It's election day and planning board. Okay. What about the Thursday? Or Thursday the 23rd? 23rd. That's like a month away. Okay. That's a long way away. That's a long way away. Okay. What Back. The heck? Well, we'll just, it's going to take a year to do this. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's just say the 23rd instead of the 13th. How's that? Or um, that's okay if... But that's a the twenty third is a Thursday. Yeah. Is that good for you? Yeah. I but I was thinking of maybe that week going back to the planning board and the select board on okay. this. Other. So let's shoot for the thirteenth. Oh man, is that isn't that good? Oh, you you want but do you don't need anything before you go back? Well, we have to have this second round. So if we okay. don't meet on the thirteenth, we'd be pushing that into June, which is okay. Okay. Except I'm the going. All right. <laughs> Oh, great. All right. Okay. The 13th? 13th. Going to give a yeah. shot and hope the babies come. Well, yeah. my, place, my baby comes in June. So oh. That's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be trying. All right, Mark, the 13th. Sounds good. All right, let's circ I'll, I'll circulate them out okay. and see if Patrick and Michaela. Yeah. All right. And Bruce. I, I move to adjourn. Second. 
I second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. <laughs>